I'm Jonathan Waters and you're watching The Cycling Dane. Hello everyone and welcome back to The Cycling Dane. Today we're going to look at one of the teams for the 2023 World Tour season. It is in fact EF Education Easy Post. And as always, I'm joined by Mr. Critter himself, Ewan Wilson and Ewan. EF Education Easy Post, one of your favorite teams here. Yes, EF, uh, a team that I think provides a lot to the table. Their marketing team is fantastic. Some of the daring things they do in terms of collaborating with Palace for a jersey, uh, even towards their, their video content, Lackla Morton cycled across Europe to raise money for Ukraine. This is an awfully likable team. However, their results don't quite stand in the same place last year with one of the lowest UCI point hauls for a World Tour squad and a fairly sm small amount of World Tour victories. But in the new year, they have exciting horizons. Yeah, as you said, not a great load of victories this year. Nine victories in total, three of them being on the World Tour. Two Grand Tour stages, Mount Scott Nielsen, as many people will recall, in the Tour de France that began in Denmark but uh, yeah two top 10s in the Giro and the Welter respectively that's kind of um, the basis of the 2022 season but they are bringing in some very exciting talent here in the new season and Richard Carapaz is the big headline from Ineos Grandes we've spoken about him a lot we've praised him as one of the best grand tour riders the one most consistent tour riders in the current generation but before we talk about him let's hear what jonathan voctus thinks of the ecuadorian superstar so 2023 richard carapaz how excited are you about that and what kind of goals are you guys targeting with him for instance well i mean i can tell you as much as i'm excited about it he's really excited about it i mean he's a really ambitious guy I and mean, I, I didn't totally know this about him but he's very focused very ambitious um, and you know and he he takes a lot of responsibility for himself and because in one of the first conversations that I had with him he said well the first thing I need to do my job is to win a bunch of races for you early in the season so that all of the rest of the team believe in me and he's like, so that's the first thing I need to do for you. And then once we're there, then, you know, then we can discuss the, the goals for the future. And I'm like, wow, okay. So it's like he almost, he wants, he wants to conquer the team internally first. That's, not many riders would say something like that. Most riders, you know, sort of, they, they want to be given something first. And then, But he, no, he wants to like take it. He wants to earn it, like, you know, Viking style. He wants to like go in and kill it. And then, okay. The so UN. In terms of the riders coming in, who else have the team got? Well, the team have made a couple of transfers coming into the new year. Of course, Richard Carapaz, as you mentioned. He's also bringing along his Costa Rican buddy, Andre Amador from Ineos as well. Rounding out their transfer market is also Stefan de Bod from South Africa and the Astana team, as well as Miguel Honoré from Quickstep Alpha Vinyl, the Dane making uh, a late season transfer to EF. They are losing some talent as well. Mikhail Valgren out the door. He had a very difficult second half to the season with uh, quite a nasty injury. I think he's rounding things out um, at a different level. Daniel uh, Ariave, the uh, Colombian rider. Ruben Guerrero, big headline there. He's moving to Movistar. Sebastian Langeveld has retired. And Lacla Morton will no longer be contracted on the roadside. He will just be a figurehead for um, the EF project in some of his other gravel exploring um projects you and do you think it takes them up a notch here they've won grand tours in the past well the giro in 2012 but do you think richard carapaz could potentially add that extra level of what should we say stature in the world tour that they've been missing over the last couple of seasons for sure i think i mean this team uh as you mentioned their grand tour victory in 2012 also uh, a silver medal at the Tour de France in 2017 proves that this team has the ability to do well. The management in this squad um, is strong enough to uh, to push them towards great things. Oh, they've, they've won monuments as well, let's not forget, and quite big stage race victories. So this squad, it, it is good historically. They've definitely got something going, and I think Carapaz will be able to bring them up to that next level. He is one of the most consistent Grand Tour riders of this generation, uh, with the win at the Giro, of course, and podiums at the Tour de France, the Buelta, and the Giro in 2020 and a fantastic Vuelta España where he took three stage wins in Mountains jersey even when he was out of the GC fight in 2022. So he definitely will bring that extra spice to this project and to EF going into the new year and I would say, I mean, 
he is probably one of the safest bets uh, to put on for for at least one Grand Tour podium this year. And that will be a huge, huge improvement for EF. So that was a very nice segue into our look at the three Grand Tours next year and or two Grand Tours and the Vuelta. Uh, but Ewan, looking at the Giro d'Italia uh, race that they've had plenty of success in, finishing ninth this year. And uh, how do you see them kind of aligning a team for the the Italian Grand Tour. We know there's plenty of time trialing within the race. We know Remco Venepol has signaled he's going to go there, the world champion. Is this a place where you send Richard Carapaz, former champion of the race and runner-up last year? I don't quite know. Purely based on the amount of time trialing kilometers in the Giro, it doesn't scream Carapaz to me. He's not a guy who you can rely on for a strong time trialing result, particularly when he's going to be up against strong time trial engines in Avonapol and Thomas, who have already signaled their intent, even Damon Adensman as well, and Sasha Vlasov will be leading Bora there as too. He's another strong time trialist. Is Katapath strong enough to gain maybe two, three minutes in the mountains to counter balance the 70 kilometers of time trialing at the Giro? I'm not quite convinced. Uh, so instead, what I suggest is probably sending a stage hunting squad. If they go all in for the Tour de France, which we'll discuss in, in a bit, I think they have a real possibility of snatching a couple of stage wins. What's been their problem sometimes is that they settle for maybe a ninth place in GC and don't sort of try to get that that stage win or uh, try to have some breakaway antics. But with the squad they have, they could do so. Stefan Bissiger is a super strong time trialist from Switzerland. I would say wise to send him here. I know Ghana is coming as well, but even Bissiger to try to get a breakaway stage win. He's good at these cold weather conditions. Andrea Piccolo, great signing uh, this year after the folding of Gazprom, the Italian has a really good shout at uh, becoming a headline act of next year's Giro and a breakout star, as could Ben Healy from Ireland. So if they send those three guys, I think they have a good chance at um, at getting a stage win and uh, contending for at least something in the newspapers after what was quite a was quite a drab Giro in 2022. I mean, they could try and go for the blue jersey once again, jersey they won with Ruben Guerrero. Uh, uh, Guerrero is not here. Yeah, uh, but as in with someone else, a Mark Padun yeah. with a. Simon Carr, potentially. Yeah, I, I'm not convinced on, on Puddin. He's had some health problems. He's also switched teams. I'm not 100% convinced he's going to be uh, the top dog. Maybe, I mean, Caicedo has won a mountain stage at the Giro in the past. Maybe he's a more consistent rider to look for for that. Maybe even Jefferson Cepeda, who we expected so much from um, in the past. Yeah, that was a bit of a letdown, but maybe he can prove us wrong this season. But nevertheless, moving on to the Tour de France, the 2023 Tour, starting in the Basque Country and Ewan, we, well, we have to start with Richard Carapaz again, the man we've mentioned the most times already. But uh, yeah, let's just hear what Voktis thought of the 2023 Tour de France. What do you think of the 2023 Tour de France road? I mean, it's, uh, it's a good route. Um, it's dynamic, super hard first week. Um, it's uh, funny enough. It's it's almost like a little bit more like a Vuelta route if you want, because like the Vuelta doesn't usually concentrate all the mountain stages. You know, the Vuelta you have some mountain stages the first week, and then some mountain stages in the middle, and some mountain stages. The tour is usually you know flat, 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 and then mountains all at the end, right? So this is it's. Yeah, I think it'll be a it'll be a very dynamic Tour de France, um, and one that suits the style of our team because I think it'll be an open, very open race. So anyways, looking at the Tour de France, the biggest race of them all, starting in the Basque Country, how do you think EF Education's team is going to look? We saw this year that Manus Court Nielsen stole most of the headlines and they managed to get a 12th place with Nielsen Paulus. Certainly not what they want to do for the 2023 season with this big investment of Carapaz, former podium finisher as well, in 2021. How do you think their team's going to look? And how do you think they're going to do? Well, of course, Carapaz has to lead this team. They brought him in. This is the Grand Tour that probably suits him the best, given the Giro's time trial in kilometers. An aggressive first week of racing also could place him right in the mix. I'm very positive towards Carapaz. I think he is definitely a guy who should be knocking on the door for a podium place. Pogaccio and Vinigo are probably going to be the top two riders, but that position for third place is really up for grabs. And he managed to fill that spot back in 2021, um, sort of playing third fiddle to the Slovenian and the Dane in that year's edition. Looking elsewhere in the team, I think Car I think Carapaz will want to bring his buddy Amador here. Amador is super experienced, ridden well in the past in uh, in Grand Tours. He's, he's even finished in top 10 and the GC in the past. Uh, looking deeper as well into the lineup, Manus Court, I think he has to come here. Such a such a polyvalent rider who can do so many things, go in the breakaways, 
uh, can also try to protect and do something in the mountains. There isn't quite a hectic first week of this year's Tour de France like we saw in 2022, uh, which might make his role a little bit less influential. But I think going into the race, protecting fourth, fifth, sixth, third place, whatever, Amanus Court will be an important figure for that, as will Alberto Bettiol. When he comes in hot uh, for a Grand Tour, he is really strong. This year's Tour de France, fantastic. 2021 Giro, brilliant. Uh, had some really good form and was a very good teammate and could also search out his own success in a breakaway. Uh, looking deeper as well in, down this start list, this is where I maybe see more of the climbers coming in into the squad. I think Hugh Carthy maybe should accept that helping out of the Tour de France could uh, cement his name in, in a new domain, then maybe focus on the Vuelta afterwards. As well, I think Simon Carr will be very important at next year's Tour de France. Some problems have kept him off the bike in 2022, but 2023's opening week will be very heavy in a part of the world he knows very well he may ride for the united kingdom but he grew up uh, in the pyrenees spent most of his time there in his in his youth years and i think uh, that knowledge as well as his ability to ride very strong in the mountains will be valuable for ef and carapaz's attempt at the tour de france there is the problem we haven't really spoken about a problem nice problem for ef education they've got three big riders who've all finished on grand tour podiums uran hugh carthy and carapaz Ooh. so it's who they fall in line behind. Where do we, we haven't even spoken about Rigoberto Run, but where does he fit in? Do you just throw him into the welter and potentially he's in a support team for Richard Carapaz or? He hasn't done the Giro in, in a while. That's the thing. I think he likes going to the Tour de France, but if he could be convinced to go to the Giro, I'd like to see it. But given that he's been at the Tour de France every year since 2017, I could only suggest that the same will happen in 2023. I mean, a good man for the experience. But moving on to the final Grand Tour, the Vuelta Espana, always kind of an afterthought. And uh, Ewan, how do you see this going? Carapaz, he was a close challenger to uh, Primoz Roglic in 2020. But uh, yeah, do you think it's just based on whatever happens in the Giro Tour as normally happens and then that will be what we see? Or will you th do you think one of these big three potentially will go out and target it um yeah maybe one of the big three will go out for it but yeah as you said it, it does depend on what happens i think ef have actually done quite well at the world in the past couple of years uh Manus court getting a lot of stages uran as well with a stage win this year 2022 and uh placing top 10 in gc was somewhat unexpected even looking down the line that they have they have done well uh the welter maybe without trying so hard for it Hugh Carthy, 2020. Um, that's also, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it, it I was impressive. You, I, was, <laughs> I like, you always put the COVID asterisks on it. I was about, I was about to say that because, oh, I mean. Poor Hugh. No, no, okay. Yeah, a brilliant result. But at the same time, has Hugh Carthy come to those lofty heights again in his career? No. Has Theo Gagan Hart from the Giro that year? No. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I do take it with a pinch of salt, but he is a capable rider who I think could definitely get a top 10 at GC. Maybe going to the Balta would be better. Maybe the Balta is his best shot. Anyways, not getting the monuments and the one-day races, the biggest one-day races in the world, and Strad Bianca we should throw in there as well. But Ewan, they have won plenty monuments in the past, but which of them do you think they're best equipped for in 2023? Well, for the Cobble Classics, they have a strong contender in Alberto Bettiol, uh, who won the Ronde von Flandre back in 2019. But, I mean, Bettiol, it's so hard to predict what his form is sometimes. He is incredibly good. He's, he's a guy who's very savvy in a race. But at the same time, I, I don't want to predict and say, well, he's, he's going to win Roubaix because I, I, I generally have no idea. Maybe a week before, I'll be able to give you a better a better outlook on that. They've also got a couple of other strong engines here. Jonas Rutsch rode a really good Autumn Roubaix back in 2021. Who knows if he's able to replicate that at this time of year. And into the Helia Classics, well, I've always liked the idea of Carapaz going for a Liege Baston or Liege. He got disqualified from it a couple of years back. Is it possible? I don't quite know. I don't quite know. But this squad is the same team that managed to get Dan Martin a uh, monument victory here. And I mean, he was a guy who was sort of pushing for, for Grand Tour success and stage races. And he got the big cheese at Liege Baston and Liege. So maybe Carapath can do the same. Yeah, it wasn't a fruitful season for them in the monuments. Nilsson Paolo is probably the best result with an eighth in Liege Baston Liege. But yeah, like you said, it looks like they could potentially be equipped for another Dan Martin success or escapade, if you will. So anyways, we can't finish a team preview or a video without having a prediction for the 2023 season here with EF Education Easy Post. And today we are going to predict 
between the two of us, their best result in terms of GC in a Grand Tour and their best result in any of the monuments. So you have to pick the rider and the race and the monument and the rider, obviously, and what position. So uh, Ewan, I'll let you go first. I'm going to say Richard Catapath finishes in fourth place at the Tour de France. And in terms of the monuments, oh, this this is going to hurt me to say, but I don't think it's going to be Bethiol. I think the best result in a monument will come from Nilsson Paulus at liege Baston at liege He showed really good promise at the one-day racing in 2022. So uh, going first with, obviously, I'm going to pick Carapace for the Grand Tours in the Tour de France. And I'll say third, how original uh the same that he did in 2021 in terms of the monuments yeah it's a hard one because it could be any of the five uh i will say manus court nielsen fifth in the ronde van vlandren and uh, of course that is very biased that's basically it for this you and do you have any last thoughts about ef education easy post for 2023 well they better make a crazy kit again because they're very good. Rafa are very good at making disruptive and challenging kits. We have a couple of sort of crazy ones coming around. As long as it's not dark blue or orange, I'll be happy. And please try to get another streetwear brand involved in your Giro kit. I'm looking towards maybe Columbia, Carhartt, Patagonia. That could be a cool collaboration there. So with that, that's basically it for our team preview of the 2023 EF Education Easy Post. Make sure to comment down below what you think of the EF team for the 2023 season. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. And of course, as always, thank you for watching and have a nice day. How was the 2022 season for you as a whole? Well, the, the first part of 2022 was really rough. I mean, it was not good for us at all. We, you know, at one point in time, out of 31 riders, 19 of them had COVID and were out uh, in the month of March. So we were, we were struggling. Um, the second half of the year, starting about, about when Magnus Court uh, won his Tour de France stage, from there on out, it was great.